Hello, the Darkness 344 here. Today I'm just going to be showing you uh, how to build and all about this very simple uh, serial data transmission by uh, a Java player called Myzuma Gaming. Uh, I think that's what he's called. I'll try and leave a link down to his video in the description. Uh, the difference is uh, I have a slightly easier way of encoding the data because the one on Java he used was, I think he used this over here which was kind of a bit complex with the observers and the hoppers and stuff so uh, I was just having a look at both the designs he had he had like two different designs uh, one was simpler than the other and uh, well this was one of his designs and I've been using this ever since in like all my computers and stuff because it is well you cannot get any better than this design basically because it is basically uh, one tick per bit so uh, first of all, uh, I guess, well, we're going to have to kind of explain what serial data is. So I think, I'm not sure if I've done this before, but basically, well, parallel data is if you have, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just do it over here. So if you have uh, three bits of data that you'd want to send down to your computer or something, you could either send it down three lines at once like this, so say I wanted to send a number 5, I could send a number 5 down like that by sending uh, 101 all at the same time, right? However, uh, this gets more complicated because, well, the more bits of data that you have, well, the more lines you have. And on some computers it isn't really a problem, but say you're sending, what, like 64 bits of data down as just one number is 64 bits then you're going to have a slight problem there where you don't really want 64 lines. So, uh, serial data uh, elimis, eliminates all of this problem with having multiple lines by instead sending all that data down just one line. And the way it does that is it just uses a bunch of pulses. So if the wire is off, it counts as a zero. And if the wire is on, it counts as a one. The, the way the serial uh, decoder well, that's the decoder, detects that you're not sending data at the time, because, of course, when it's a zero, it's going to be off all the time, isn't it? So it might still be sending zeros. Who knows? Uh, so what you have to do is send a thing called a signal bit, which basically is uh, the first bit you send, you send it each time you send out a serial string of data, and it basically tells the decoder to, to be like, oh, uh, information's coming in, better start... Uh, uh, clearing the registers and getting ready for that data to come in and that's basically what that does uh, I just noticed out the corner of my eye this over here and this is quite useful in serial data so if you only had one line you could have a two-way repeater like this as you can see it works uh, two ways so you could always use that for just one line the great thing about serial data is that you could have multiple devices connected to this just one line so in a minute, I'm going to show you a computer I have uh, somewhere over in that general direction where I've basically used serial data and I'm going to hook up like displays and stuff to it, which should be pretty cool if it works. Uh, so yeah, this was his design over here for the encoder, but I've seen this design used before and I was like, maybe it would work for this as well. And it works. So I'm just going to show you how to build this and also set it up because the problem with this is it requires like different amounts of timings for different like how many however many bits you have you have to like time the repeat it's different and stuff so uh, we're just going to do like a simple 8-bit uh, one for instance so first of all uh, we're just going to build the encoder over there and we'll just build it here so if we uh, let me just go a bit over here so let's just start by uh, building a one tick pulse generator so the way we're going to do it, that is block, and you can power this block with like anything. I'm just going to use like a lever like that, a torch on top, and then we're going to have another block there. Repeater on two ticks. You have to make sure this is two ticks because this this redstone torch takes one tick. So you, so then you have another one tick over here. It'll, I'll show you basically. So if we go like this, and then we have a redstone torch, and whenever we activate this, it flashes that torch just like that for like a very split second. So we're not actually going to use this torch because we're going to have it inverted, the signal. So we can just take it straight from here and we're just going to pull the signal down like this. 
So what we're also going to do is uh, place a piece of redstone and put a piece, a block basically, and a redstone torch down here. This is going to act as our signal bit, as I said earlier, basically telling the decoder whenever we uh, send data like this, the signal bit will always activate. And whenever the decoder receives the signal bit, it will know, oh, I'm being sent data, I better accept whatever's coming down the line. Even if the line is all off or all on, it will count as all zeros or all ones, as long as the signal bit's been sent, basically. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to build our actual data. So I said 8 bits, so we're just going to build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And as you can see, uh, that we have 9 bits in total because you have the one signal bit, but you're always going to have the, the extra one. You can't really uh, cut that out because it's very important. I'm just going to place redstone like this. And here we have our first problem over here. So we don't the redstone does not extend to this block or this block so what we're going to have to do is put a repeater here but won't that skew off like the results uh it will depend actually we don't put a repeater there yet cross out whatever i said there so uh we're just going to put a repeater here in between of these to time them uh, by one tick each i mean to delay them by one tick each so i'll explain about the loss of signal there in a bit, don't worry about that yet. So once we've done this, we're also going to want to place redstone torches down here, like this. And we're going to place a redstone line going from here all the way across this way. And this is going to be our output over here. And just uh, I'm just going to put a redstone repeater here and break this one so I know... Yeah, actually no, I'm not going to break that one. So this redstone repeater if this one is on, that repeater should also be getting a signal. However, if I place a torch down here, as you can see, it does not stretch far enough. So what we need to do is uh, locate where the signal stops. So if this torch is on, right? So let's just turn this torch on. If this torch is on, the signal can only reach up to here. So what we're going to do is break this, place a repeater here, but that also means we need to adjust the timing by one tick, which also means we can break this one and place a repeater here. Say, however, if it was the signal only reached to here, basically, we'd break this, place a repeater, and break that and place a redstone dust. Basically, the exact same as what we've done there. I'm just doing it here so it's a bit easier for you to see. Uh, now, oh, I'm actually just going to get rid of this too because we don't need it. Now, uh, we're going to want to be able to... Uh, tell these torches to turn on and off because at the moment when we pulse it we we just get all ones from all of the tor torches we can't turn them on or off like change what our signals so what we're going to do is we're going to place a block on top of these pieces of redstone like this and uh, we're also going to place a block on top of those as well two blocks up basically and then we can place a piece of redstone dust on top of each of these torches. Sorry about this one, not meant to do. Do not do this one because this one has to always activate each time. You do not want to do this. Uh, but you do want to do it for all the ones that you want to be able to be toggled. So don't do it for the signal bit, only do it for these ones. Now we're going to put uh, redstone torches down along like this as well. Uh, we can stretch these off a bit. And these are basically going to be your inputs over here. So you can toggle these uh, lines to be on or off depending on what uh, you, your signal will be. So we can just put, uh, you know, I'm going to make it fancy and put lamps like this. So it's a bit easier for us to see. And I'll just put levers on top of these. So as you can see we can send like different signals down, say we want to send the number 5 we could send a number 5 down by doing that. So uh, now we've got the encoder where well, we can check it by just uh, let's just do this uh, and this should basically do an on off on off pulse when we activate this. You can also use a button here I just like using a leaf. I'm going to put it here instead it'll be easy. As you can see we get the on off on off pulse from this so that means it definitely works. So now on to the actual uh, decoder part. This is the more tricky part. This is a quite a simple design. However, de decoder is also simple, 
but it was it's a complex design I, I still don't get how it works fully it's really clever it's just comparators and stuff of course so uh, I'm just gonna activate this line so I can see far and we're just gonna say we'll make it over here just to demonstrate that you can make it as long as possible basically you can make it as far as you want however whenever you do make this line make sure all your repeaters are only on one tick like this if they are on two ticks it will break the signal it'll just because this is a one tick per this is one bit per tick so you cannot have two tick repeaters it'll just corrupt the signal so if you wanted to have a four tick delay well instead of having a four tick repeater you'd have to have four separate repeaters like this unfortunately this is just the case because uh, one tick per bit However, on the plus side, you get one tick per bit, which is the fastest possible data transfer in Minecraft. Uh, basically, yeah, you, you will not get faster than this for a redstone signal. Uh, the only way I can think of you getting faster than this is using a repeaters, which I'm not sure if they're 1.5 tick per bit, but repeaters, I meant comparators, but even still, the difference is uh, comparators you'd be able to send more information uh, down this they'd take a whole lot longer than uh, just this line so it, even though you could send more information down it would not be worth it seeing as this is really fast as well as uh, a lot of data transmission basically so uh, we're gonna build it over here so I'm just gonna see how far it stretches and we'll just put another uh, we'll put a repeater down here and start it over here so what uh, we're first going to want to do is place down two repeaters like this and have this one the middle one on two ticks We're also going to place a piece of redstone down like that Then what we're going to do Redstone dust a block and a comparator this way like that as you can see and Make sure you click it and the thing turns red like that Then we're also going to put a block here as well as a block here and a block here and then we're going to place a repeater here and set that to four ticks now the rest of this I will show you how to do the timings but this is we'll just build the actual module first and then do the timings then we're going to place a piece of redstone down here and here as well as here and now we're going to place a redstone repeater on one tick into going into this block so uh, it creates a loop as you can see and we'll also place a redstone repeater here and here across like that so we're also going to place another block here and a piece of redstone here and then we can stretch these out like this as you can see they basically make lines next to each other so the way we're going to deal with the rest of this is now we're going to have to place uh, repeaters for each bit we have so if I just go, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we do not need to include the ninth bit because that's just a signal bit. You're not actually using that for your information. We're only using these uh, bits over here. Now we're going to, of course, this redstone line has to be run next to them. And you're going to want to place uh, repeaters facing into these repeaters on each of them, just like this. So this is going to be using, these are basically registers. And the way we're going to store the information is by using a very old technique called repeater locking, uh, which is a very cool technique is when you power this repeater and it will lock this repeater. So if you power a repeater pointing into another, it will lock the repeater. As you can see, there's like a, a bedrock kind of texture on top and that means if you have a signal going through it you will not be able to the signal will not be able to pass however if you unlock it the signal will pass but if it's on and you lock it the signal it will just stay on and it will not be able to pass it basically locks whatever the state this was when you turn it on basically it's quite a useful thing you can use it in RAM and stuff uh, now we're going to uh, let's just link up this as well and as you can see we are the this signal from here stretches all the way up to over here so these ones are not powered that's not good because these need to be powered or else it will not work 
So what we're going to do is we're going to place a repeater here and the only problem about this is it means these are now going to activate at different times. These repeaters will activate sooner than these repeaters because it's a one tick, two tick for this one. And for this one, it's only a one tick from that. So what we're going to do is place all these repeaters over here on two ticks. And that means it's a one tick, two tick for this one, as well as a one tick and a two tick for this one. These are only on one ticks. So if you, if you keep expanding, right, and you have, and your signal runs out here, you place another repeater here, have these on one tick, have these on two ticks, have these on three ticks, and you keep these on one ticks, of course. Uh, if you get what I mean, it basically just means they will all activate at the same time. And you just continue this pattern down, basically. So now let's just break these. Uh, now uh, I'm just going to pull out the inputs like this, and these are your these I'm I mean outputs. These are these are your outputs, and you can feed these into a set of registers or whatever you want. Basically, I'm just going to put lamps down for now. So uh, now we actually have to work on the timing side of things. This is a bit more tricky. So if we uh, hop over here and break this, and make sure all of these inputs are set to off and just trigger it once like this and that should uh, as we can see it should just go through the system and we only have two lamps that are off in in theory we would want all of the lamps to be off so since we have two lamps off that means we need one tick two tick three tick four tick five tick six ticks left so uh, six ticks delay so the way we're going to do that Let's place another repeater down like this and put that on four ticks and another repeater down like this and put that on two ticks because four ticks plus two ticks equals six ticks and we'll just place a piece of redstone down like that and then you can just continue adding these if your signals any longer uh, so now let's just uh, activate it again and as you can see they should all be off however if I turn them all on like this when we activate it they should all turn on. That's perfect. So now say I uh, turn these two off and uh, these two off, we should get this pattern. One, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. And so when we send this, you can use a button of course. It just needs to be a toggle pulse. As you can see, we get what we had over there. And this is perfect and that's basically how you do it, and it's really fast. And I think it's if these two ones t turn on only, then it will also be these ones over here. It won't be mirrored, basically. So it will be these, the exact same in line, like that. So that's basically how you build it. So now I'm actually going to go over and show a few examples of how this can be used. So uh, stay tuned for that. So, I'm over by my first example over here, which is a basic uh, 4x4 serial display. So this is 4x4, as these are, uh, it's 2x2 two two is 1 pixel. So you have uh, 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4 pixels by 4 pixels, basically. So it's just a 2x2 two two segment is a, is a pixel. So this is, f this is a 4x4 display, which, as you can see, uses the exact same... Uh, decoder we are using as well as the same encoder we were using over there the only thing that i've changed about it is this decoder over here as you can see i've built it directly into the display so you have uh, several layers like this and these are basically as you can see so uh the signal goes in here and it runs all the way through here going up a level all the way through here going up a level all the way through here going up a level and all the way through here and that's basically the display so if we go over here I've also expanded these uh, out the inputs out and we have these uh, little ROM cells over here so I've got none of them on at the moment so when I send a pulse uh, it should wipe the display as we can see so now I've basically these ROM cells I've programmed different patterns in uh, to display on that over there. 
So let's just trigger the first one, for instance. So I'll just uh, turn the certain inputs on and just update display. And as you can see, the display updates for all of them on. So uh, let's show you the next one. So if I turn the next one on, as you can see, the, dis the display updates. So all of these outside ones are on, but these four inside ones are off. This is a very simple concept and it's just turning the right ones on and the right ones off as you can see. Uh, it's just missing out the ones that we don't want to turn on. So I, I actually have quite a few over here. But they're, they're pretty simple and the display does take a long time to update as you can see and it will get exponentially bigger the more pixels you add. But it, I mean think of it on the plus side you only have one input to the entire display and that makes things a lot well wires between the displays and computers a whole lot smaller as you can see you just can display different images like a happy face for instance I think I did show you a display off like this before however I did not show a nice input system like this it was like a really messy input system that I used this is just a much nicer small one like this uh, so uh, now onto the second case, which is right over here, so I will not cut the video. So over here is one of my computers that I've built quite a while ago now, uh, which is called uh, the Cube. And let me just get rid of this structure block. Uh, over here, we actually have a serial output. So I've made my own serial protocol, which is basically... Uh, the way the data is uh, used so uh, it's kind of hard to explain but basically so you can have like 8 bits of data but they it's just 8 bits what is that 8 bits going to do so I'll come back to it when I show off the computer later I'll show off a better example of this later and I'll come back to that but uh, it basically uh, tells different objects that you connect to it, so different appliances, uh, what the what the data means and uh, what it should do with the data. So as you can see, uh, I just have a four bits uh, output. Though, hang on a minute, this is not four bits. That's because these four bits is the data, and these four bits is the what to do with the data and these four bits is the address to the certain device because as I was saying earlier you can have multiple devices hooked up to the exact same uh, line it's just what you do you would put different addresses for them basically so they would, they'd all have different addresses and they'd all receive the same data it's just the one with the correct address would actually use that data so uh, now I'm going to as you can see the April Fool cube uh, I'll show you another example, which is this over here. And this was basically my word processor machine. And as you can see, again, I've used the exact same serial principle where whenever you type a letter, it will basically convert, convert the letter you've pressed into binary and then convert that binary into serial with the serial uh, encoder, as you can see, and then it will decode that uh, over here in the decoder which is a bit messy I've done it both sides over here so it loops around like that but that just makes it so it's a bit smaller and then the depending on what you've sent uh, the machine will figure out uh, by the address and by the ID it will figure out what you want to do with the data and it will update the display accordingly so it might add a letter, it might remove a letter, it might clear the entire display. That's basically what it does. So I think over here, yes, you can see it uses my AX344 uh, SDB 2.1 protocol, I think. And as you can see, you have the different uh, codes to put into it and it will update the display accordingly. So uh, now over to the final example, which is just right over here. So I'll fly here again. And this is basically uh, it working in an entire computer. So an unfinished computer at that, which is a shame. I'm going to finish this computer at some point. So uh, over here, 
as you can once again see, we have the encoder over here. It's one of those double-sided ones again. They just make things a lot smaller. And as you can see, I'm transmitting uh, 4, 8, uh, 16, 30... No, I've done that wrong. 4, 8, 16 bits down here. So, and that's my standard protocol. And the uh, input is going it's down here in this like really messy squiggle. It's using the exact same uh, decoder. It's just I've done it like really weird because I didn't have that much space. And uh, it will basically tell the computer what to do with that data. So whether to uh, put it in the registers, whether to actually use it in a program, or or even like uh, one. This is basically a core, not a computer. It can tell one of uh, it can basically tell a different core to turn off or turn on or do something with the data and because this is a computer on its own but when when I finish it it will basically be a core out of a four core computer and I can have four of these all connected together and it will work as one computer hopefully so uh, I hope uh, that gave you a bit of inspiration on what you can do with these I'm sorry it's kind of the video has gone a bit long again typical fashion but uh, yeah, these are actually really useful. Uh, big shout out to Mozuma Games for coming up with the design. It's a really compact and cool design, and I'm I still cannot wrap my head around it. I is I'm pro I'm pretty sure for a one tick per bit one, it's actually not possible possible to make a smaller design than this. Maybe compact down the exact same design, but to make it smaller, I don't think it's possible. Like. A different design to make it a smaller one but yeah i uh, hope you enjoyed this video sorry it's gotten on a bit long again and yeah thanks for watching please like and subscribe and i am out